Hey Internet, I'm the Cow Says Moo, and you're watching the first ep the first adventures of Dr. Moo episode 4, my new uh, Minecraft 1.2.5 Let's Play with a ton of mods. Um, I think we left off in here last time, uh, in my little kind of industrial craft room in the basement of my house. Um, and I think we'll probably start up with just a bit more industrial craft. Um, what I need at this point is, uh, I think I need a bat box, because currently I'm creating energy here in this generator, and it's just distributing it straight over to these two machines. But it's creating it faster than these machines can use it, so I'm wasting quite a bit of energy that way. So I'm going to make a battery box and put it underneath this generator, and it will store uh, energy, uh, and then I won't be wasting quite so much of it. So uh, to do that, I'm also going to want probably one other item uh, used in industrial craft. It's the wrench, and it lets you move, remove, and turn, and just otherwise manipulate uh, machines. Um, and the wrench in industrial craft is made with bronze. It is this one here. So I will need to make up some bronze, which is easy enough. It's just uh, three copper ingots, ore, dust, and uh, one tin. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, I've got both here, tin and dust. We'll go ahead and just make them both just to show you that they both work. There's bronze dust, and then we'll go with like four here. Hmm, I think that should work. Bronze ingot requires three copper and one tin. Oh, that's the other kind of tin and the other kind of copper, which I don't have. Uh, so, I guess I have to do it with the dust. That's cool. That's fine. I've got plenty of dust here. Um, bronze dust. We'll throw that into my furnace and whip that bad boy up. And once I get a few pieces, I'll be back and we'll make this uh, wrench and maybe some armor or something too, because I'm feeling kind of naked roaming around uh, um, and mining and stuff. As you can see, I've died a couple times. Uh, my levels are back down to 4 from 21, so while mining off-camera, I've died a couple times. Uh, not a big deal, but I'd probably do better off with some armor, so I might make some up. Hmm, I kind of thought that tin and bronze, or tin and copper thing would work. You know what? I think I've got some of the other uh, tin up here from something. I don't know what exactly I got it from. Let's give that a try. I'm not sure how I ended up with this. I think I've got my uh, settings just a little wonky in uh, for or my forge settings, but we'll see. I don't think it's a, a huge deal. Once I start using the macerators exclusively, it won't matter much. Oh yeah, see, these work just fine. So that's cool. I'll do it like this. And then we'll just get a, have a bunch of bronze ready to go. And then these will come up. So that, since that's the only thing I'll be able to do with this bronze, probably, uh, let's go ahead and make some armor with it. Uh, bronze armor is pretty much the same as iron armor. It looks a little different, obviously. But as far as protection and... Uh, Um, the amount of damage it can take before it's destroyed. It's about the same. Here we go. Wow, I got a full set. and still got plenty to spare. And it's got that nice orangey-bronzy sort of color. Looks pretty good. Uh, maybe I'll make a couple tools with it, too, since I've got all that extra stuff there. Or maybe I'll just put it up in my... Uh, chest and we'll just go with it. Um, but let's go ahead and make that wrench out of it. I may as well. There we go. So now I've got my first wrench, and there are several different ones, as you may have noticed. 
There's another ranch, there's another ranch for different things. I'm not sure what this one is off the top of my head. It might be the same as this one, just from uh, forestry or something instead. 5263. Let's see if we can figure out what that one is here. Yeah, it looks like it must be forestry, but uh, you can use this wrench in its place, I think. Um, and then there's also, of course, a screwdriver from Red Power and the Arcane Tinkering Tools from Thomcraft 2. Uh, and they all basically do the same thing, just for different uh, mods. I actually wish Forge would maybe combine them together. That would be awesome, but not a, not a huge deal. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, we'll get back to what I was actually wanting to do, which was make a bat box. So I'll have to run up here and get some wood, I think. I think I've got some planks up here already made up. Yeah, there we go. Um, one of the things I did was I, uh, off camera here, was I grew some trees just over in this area over here and cut them down. I drew some pine and some birch just right over here in this open area and cut them down so I could... Uh, build up my stacks of wood a little bit and I finished off this uh, loft in here. Um, I didn't move my bed yet, but that's alright. Once I get a roof, I'll move the bed over into a corner or something and we'll see how it looks. But the loft has at least finished up the flooring, so that's good. Um, let's see, I've got copper, rubber, wire. What else am I going to need for a bat box? Uh, batteries, which are 10. Redstone. Ah, oh, let's get some redstone. I also sorted my chests a little bit. This one's ores and things like that, uh, plus Thomcraft stuff. This one's mostly forestry and animal related type stuff. And this is other things. I've got some just uh, stone and some created items and uh, stuff from fossils, so just kind of assorted things. But I've got them at least a little sorted so I can find them now. <laughs> um, I've got plenty of rubber finally finished up, so let's go ahead and just make up some a uh, bit more wire and make up some rubber there, ru insulated rubber wire. There we are, because we'll need those for the batteries as well. And I've got some tin here, so let's get these batteries started. I'll need three batteries. There we go. And some wood. I think it's like this. I already forgot, of course. Something like that. Hey, there we go. Bat box. Ta-da. And then I will dig down underneath this guy here. And remove this wire. And put the bat box in. And I think I've got that set up right. Oh, yep, I do. So I didn't need my wrench after all. But if you get rid of this piece right here, you'll see that there's a dot right there. That's the output facing of the bat box. Uh, all the other ones are input facings. Um, so this is where energy will come out of and any of the other uh, facings are where energy can go into, including the facing that the generator's on, which is why the generator started running. It's filling up this bat box now, which can hold 40,000 EU. So there we go. Put this cord down so my machines are functioning again. We'll just use dirt here for the time being. There we go. So I'm all set there. Um, I made some armor. Got that generator. That's probably good enough for this area here. Um, <coughs> I was trying to decide what to do next. I've got all kinds of things I want to do now that I've got a few resources here and there. Um, I think, though, I'm going to focus on what was kind of my concept for this uh, Let's Play. He's a 
a realm's traveler, so I'm going to start working on some Mistcraft stuff, I think, next. Um, for Mistcraft, I'm going to need quite a few books. Uh, and, of course, to make books, I need uh, sugarcane. So let's go ahead and start just a real quick sugarcane farm. Um, let's see where I end up putting my water bucket. There we go. Just one. Well, that'll be a hassle. Let's make another one real quick. With industrial craft, you can make buckets out of tin. Uh, and there's slightly fewer uses for tin than there are for iron, so I think I'll go ahead and do that right now. And let's go run somewhere and get a little bit more water so I can start an infinite supply up here somewhere. <laughs> Had a creeper explode down here, obviously. I can patch that up now. I've got my material back on me. I don't remember what I was running around doing, but for some reason I didn't have all my stuff on me. And I ran out of <laughs> dirt. So I left this hole here. Oh well. Oh, I think I was cutting down all these trees and I just needed space for stuff, so I just dumped some things. Including what I ended up needing. My test certificate should still be hanging out in here. Make sure. Oh, I got a slime coming. Hey, slimer. good sign. That means my uh, V-levels might be pretty high right here. Yep, there's two of them back there still. Good. You guys sit tight. I'll be using you eventually. I don't know for what exactly, but I will. Alright, get my other water. Oh, I had a second water bucket. Uh, whatever. Now I've got three. Apparently, I can't see my own inventory. Oh well. Anyway, we'll head back up top and make a infinite water supply of some sort. Oh, looks like he blew away part of this, too. Bastard. I'll have to go. Um, I happen to have those on me. and I'll just bring down a couple fence posts next time I come down. Another thing I want to do for sure is make a red power saw so I can turn these steps into actual steps so I don't have to jump up them. Yeah, there's just so much I want to do now that I've got a little bit of resources. Uh, I definitely need to still go mining though because I've only got one diamond still. Bleh. But Alrighty. Um, what was I doing? I don't even remember. Infinite water source to make... Oh, sugarcane farm. Okay, so where do I want to put this sugarcane farm? Hmm. Well, that would be a really small one. I think most of my farms actually are going to go down here, though. So maybe we'll just make one right down here. Eventually I'll move my sheep down here too, just because their noise is kind of annoying up at the house all the time. Well, let me decide exactly where I want to put this sugarcane farm, and I will be back. Alright, I'm back. Uh, for the time being, I think I'm just going to do it right here. I'm not going to do anything too major, I just want to get started on some... Uh, sugarcane, because I know I'll need a bunch of it eventually. Between Thomcraft and Miscraft, I'm going to use just a ton. So we'll put it here, uh, and we'll just have three rows of sugarcane growing, and it's not going to be automated or anything interesting at this point, just because I don't quite have the technology to do that sort of thing yet. Uh, but we'll do like a, maybe a row of seven or so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that looks good. And we'll go ahead and just get rid of this and make it dirt, make it look all uniform. Uh, that's not in there, that's in here. There we go. And we'll use one of my water buckets. 
rockets here. And another one. Right there to get an infinite and just go on down the line. There we go. There we are, and now we'll plant these uh, sugar canes. Where did they go? There they are. For some reason, I'm having a hard time seeing things. Alrighty, so I'll just pop down here every now and then and punch those down and get some new sugar canes, which will help quite a bit. Uh, we've still got like 30 left, so we'll go up and make a couple books and get started with a little bit of basic uh, miscraft stuff. I definitely need to add another door to here, figure out what my layout of this inside of the house is going to look like, but we'll do that a little later, I think. Probably put a door right here. Yeah, that looks like a pretty good spot, but we'll see. Um, so let's turn the rest of these into some paper. And then turn the paper into some books. There we go. And then we've got ten books, so we'll turn uh, four of them right now into linking books. And linking books bring you back to the overworld from other dimensions. And they bring you back to the exact spot that you created the book. So when I come back, I will be right here facing this uh, uh, crafting bench. So that's cool. Um, another thing we'll make from Mistcraft will be maybe the, I think it's called a table. writing table, I thought. Writing desk, there we go. Oops. Let's see what that is. Uh, some wood, a feather, and an ink. That's easy enough. Five wood, one feather, and one ink. I found some squid somewhere along the way, so I know I've got ink somewhere here. There we go. And five wood, which I've got on me. There we go, writing desk. And we will want, uh, I think it's called a notebook. And I'll show you guys what each of these things do in a bit. Uh, that's nine pieces of paper. Oh, I shouldn't have probably used up all my... Uh... I forgot about this. Um, there, I've got a few left, that's all right. Notebook. Sweet. And that's the only one I'm going to need to write, so we'll just make books here for the rest of them. Um, let's throw this stuff in here for the time being. And I think I'm going to make a little temporary mistcraft room just right down here. So we'll dig this area out real quick. It doesn't have to be all that big at this point. I think I'll raise the ceiling one though, just because I feel claustrophobic in here. As I start traveling more and getting more items, obviously I'm going to fancy these up a bit, like I did in my last Let's Play. Uh, I do a little bit of form and a little bit of function. so. Uh, we'll put down this writing table, or try to, writing desk, there we go. Just looks like some bookcases. Um, kind of wish that this was uh, gussied up a bit, but it'll be fine. Um, and you go to the writing table and put your notebook in it, I think is how it works. There we go. 
And what this does is it records all the different areas you go to. Um, each age that you go to has uh, different variables that they are set. Um, and this records all the different variables. Things like uh, what color the sky is, what kind of biomes are there, uh, that sort of thing. So now let's make just a few of these descriptive books, which are the books you write to uh, go to different ages. And I'll need some feathers for those. I have four linking books, so let's make four of them. And it's just a book and a feather. Pretty easy. There we go, four descriptive books. And as you can see, each one of the books has a different age. Apparently we started at 58 for some reason, which is fine, whatever. Um, and so when you travel to them, each one of them will be totally different looking places. Um, there is a bug of some sort between Miscraft and Red Power that causes some problems, and if you watched my last season, you saw it happen right at the very end where I was uh, just kind of being getting frustrated and just going to random worlds. Uh, where you can lose all of your items and spawn back at your spawn point in the overworld when you come back. So one of the things I'm going to do is save the state with NEI, which uh, I'll have to slip into cheat mode to do, but it's better than losing everything I have for just a bug. I mean, all I'm doing is avoiding a bug. I'm not actually cheating. So, eh. That's how I'll rationalize it. <laughs> I'm sure you could make an argument that there are inherent risks in traveling to different dimensions and such, but, you know, that just doesn't sound like much fun, losing what I've got on me. So I just went back down to fill up my water buckets. I noticed they were empty while I was talking. Um, and I will come back up here and get rid of a bunch of stuff that I don't need. And then I will come back and we will make our first trip into another dimension. Uh, sending Dr. Moo out trying to find his way back to Calvana. So I'll be back in a second. Alright folks, I'm back. I uh, got rid of everything I don't need, including a bunch of stuff from my backpacks. Um, I've got uh, some weapons, armor, tools. It looks like I need to make that axe. I was going to do that off camera, but I didn't. There we go. So I've got an axe and some sticks. I've got just a little bit of wood and some more materials to make more tools if I need them. And then my books. Uh, so if we put these books in the table with the notebook right now, I don't think there's going to be much there. Nope, there's not much there. But once we go to it, to the world, um, it will randomly assign different traits for that world, and then that book will be filled with those traits. And what the notebook does then is it just keeps track of all those traits. And once you have them learned in your notebook, in the future then you can put a new descriptive book up into your desk and actually deliberately write those traits into a world. So you can tailor make a world to the way you want it, which is super cool. Um, and eventually Dr. Moo will have a bunch of these traits learned and he will be creating these worlds to go to uh, as he's looking for Calvana. And I think what I intend to do with this is try to leave this world that I'm in right now in relatively pristine shape. Obviously I've done some mining and stuff and I will continue to do just regular mining here, but I don't want to do serious um, uh, Thomcraft stuff here. I don't want to do set up like big quarries and things like that because they leave big holes in the world and are kind of ugly. So I'm going to leave this world in a living, uh, you know, pretty lush state and then go and abuse these worlds that I go to through Minecraft or Mistcraft. Sorry. Anyway, um, Let's go ahead and get ready to travel to the first world that I want to go to. So we'll go with, uh, we'll just go with one because I don't, I've never actually even used these before except when playing with Miscraft um, to save our current state of items and whatnot. 
and then we will just uh, drop this book into one of my slots and head out. The way you do it is you click on it and then you right click and hold it like you were shooting a bow and it stretches. Then you just release it and boom, you're traveling to another dimension. Pretty sweet. simulating the world for a bit. It's being a little slow, so that's not a good sign, but we'll see. Oh, that's not too bad. Um, looks like it's a water world. In fact, it looks like it's entirely a water world. And there's sharks. Awesome. And piranhas. <laughs> so I think my book to this world has probably sunk down all the way to the bottom of the ocean floor. I don't see it, but uh, that's okay. We'll come up here to the surface again so I don't drown. Probably start drowning though, it looks like. Yep, there we go. Alrighty. Uh, as you can see, the skies are red. That's one of the weird features that you can get. Oh, hello, shark. killed him. I won't be able to get his shark's teeth, though. That's alright. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just put a linking book back in my inventory quickly uh, so I don't drown and come back up and then we will activate it to go back to the overworld. There we go. Back in my overworld. It's raining. That's interesting. Um, and as you can see, I spawned right back in the place that I created these... Uh, linking books. I think in the future I'll probably create them down here. Oh, and let's see, where'd that book go? There it is, right there. So that's where I left, so that's where the world dropped. And if we were to go back to this age, age 58, the linking book would be on the bottom of the ocean. Which is no good, but that's okay. I don't really plan on going back to that world anytime soon. Um... But anyway, let's pick up this book, which is a uh, right-click, and we'll take it over here and drop it in my notebook, and we'll take a look at it. There we go. As you can see, it was a single biome, river. Oh, so it wasn't even ocean. It was just river everywhere. Black fog, colorized, normal sunset colors, but it was dark, and it did look pretty dark, normal time, and flat. So those are all the traits that we got from that particular age. And if we wanted to, we could write those into a few, uh, age that we wanted to go to. So like 59, if we wanted it to be flat, we could just click flat, and it would add it to this world. So now this world is guaranteed to be a flat world, which is cool. Um, so now when we travel back to it, by doing the same thing, and actually... Uh, Let's go ahead and save a new, even though nothing much has changed, just that one world. Um, there, and I'll have my linking book ready, unlike the last time. <laughs> so we'll travel to this one, and it should be flat. Simulating the world for a bit, there we go. And see, it is flat. Looks like it's flat plains with some uh, snowy things, and whatever these are. Let's go check those things out. What are they? They're crazy. Look like they're made of wood. Yeah, they're definitely made of wood. That's neat. Ooh, lots of slimes. Uh, monoliths. That's cool. Um, and these just chop down like normal wood, it looks like. Yeah, so they're just big wooden, weird spire things. That's kind of neat. So that's just one of the uh, features you can get out of uh, Minecraft, or Mistcraft world. I don't know why I can't say Mistcraft. Uh, pretty cool, though. And, of course, you've got sheep spawning. Um, obviously mod stuff is working because we've got slimes and monoliths here in this in this uh, age as well. 
So it's not a particularly interesting realm because it's flat and they're kind of boring, but these weird wooden spires are kind of neat. Um, might come back at some point to visit them, but let's just head out of here for right now and take a look at what that age added to our notebook again. Here we go, back. Alrighty, so this one was flat, like we said. It's got medium-sized biomes. Forest was one of them, though we didn't see that. Extreme Hill's Edge, which is kind of negated by the flat terrain. Uh, frozen Ocean, which is what those snowy biomes that we saw were. It had mine shafts in it, if we were to have dug down. Uh, it's got wooden tendrils, so that must have been what those weird wood pieces were. There are strongholds in that world, which is neat, so you could get to the uh, the end from that. Uh, it was nice and bright, and it had fast flowing time. So instead of uh, ten minute days, it probably has like five minute long days and then five minute nights, which is kind of cool. And all of those were added over here. These are the biomes we know about now. Biome controllers, single biome, and medium biomes. Lighting bright dark, sky, black fog, colorized fog, normal sunset colors, different terrain features that we've learned. All three of those were from that one age. Uh, 58, I don't know that it had any of them, did it? Nope, 58 didn't have any of those, so we learned them all just from that one age. That's pretty cool. Flat worlds and fast and normal time. So uh, we'll go ahead and travel to the next stage and see what it is. I'll be right back once I get there rather than making you wait through the whole loading stuff again. So I'll be right back. All right, looks like this world is still generating and uh, it's being just a little laggy on generation, but not too bad. Um, it's one of the neater ones in my opinion. Uh, one of the neater terrain types. It's called a cave world, I think is what it was. Um, and it all generates in caves. So as you can see, I'm at uh, Y level 91, but I'm underground. There's rocks over my head. It's dark almost everywhere. There's monsters all around. Um, looks like I'm in a grassland, though I'm underground, which is kind of interesting. Um, and obviously resources are generating. I've got coal here. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's not going to be any trees in this world, probably, because I'm underground. And holy cow, this is like a, a cave world, sky world combination. That's freaky. Uh, sky world's yet another type of uh, terrain type. Um, and what it does is it doesn't generate a bottom of the world. Instead, it just goes down forever until you hit the Z level zero and then you just fall through the bottom of the world. I assume. I don't know. I've never actually tried falling. You'd probably die. Um, looks like there's some spots that are lighted up. That's probably Thomcraft crystals, I would guess. But anyway, um, at this point, I'm not intending to spend a whole lot of time in each world. I'm just kind of snooping around trying to get the different... Uh, flags and traits for the different worlds set up, and then I can start generating my own worlds, but this one's kind of neat. I might end up coming back to it. We'll see. So we'll head back here. There we go. Scoop that up, 60, and pop that in here, and we'll take a look at what it was. It was single biome, river, green fog, red fog, blue fog. That's weird. That's probably a very instable, unstable age because it's got several different fog types, skylands, and cave world. Wow, that's just a crazy, crazy world with normal time. Um, I'll mark it. it. It was much more interesting than the previous two worlds. So this is a sky cave uh, river world, or age. We'll call it an age. 
There we go. And you can name them whatever you want, obviously, which is neat. Um, let's pull that out of there. And I have one more linking book and one more age to go to, so I guess I will just go ahead and do that one. Um, let's go ahead and save again. And I'll be right back once I get to the age and once it generates. I'm glad I did it last time because it took a little while to generate. Cave worlds are those worlds that sometimes are kind of buggy. Uh, in combination with red power, they have issues generating uh, marble, I think is what I've heard. And it just locks up and spits you out somewhere weird. I don't, I don't exactly know what the problem is. Uh, but didn't run into that issue in that world, and hopefully we won't, but we'll see. I'll be back in a bit, though, once I get to this age. All right, folks, I'm here. It generated nice and quick, and this is a very peculiar-looking uh, age, isn't it? Um, the biomes are arranged in a weird checker checkerboard pattern, and it looks like I've got desert or beach or something with just a bunch of sand, and then mushrooms. Because uh, we've got big, great big mushrooms growing, obviously. That's just crazy. Cut down a few of these and see if I can get a little, a little bit of mushroom stuff. Why not? There we go. Get a few mushrooms. Um, and we've got mushrooms growing over here. Something you only, only see in mushroom biomes, so that's cool. Hmm, it's actually a good way to get leather. I'm in a different age. I don't have to worry about spawning. Maybe I'll just whack a couple of these and get some leather. Get some beef. These mushrooms are an abomination anyway. Cows should be cows. <laughs> huh? Got some cactus. Got a obelisk here. Or a monolith. Um, and also some interesting sandstone blocks that are new with uh, 1.2.5. I haven't seen them before, so I'm going to grab them just because they're something a little new and different to me. Maybe I'll use them as decoration somewhere. Awesome. So that's what this age is. It's a weird checkerboard pattern. It looks like it's all flat again, so it's a little boring, but the combination of mycelium and mushroom realm and desert is definitely odd. Uh, so it's just kind of a strange realm. But anyway, we'll head back and see what uh, traits it adds to my notebook here. Sixty-one. All right, so we got checkerboard biomes, desert, mushroom island. Normal sunset, green sunset, standard lighting, slow time. Ooh, slow time. So opposite of, of fast time, obviously. Uh, slow time days and nights last longer than normal Minecraft days and nights. Uh, I don't know exactly how long, but longer. Oh, and that one says it was a cave world, but I think the checkerboard probably overrode it. So that also might create instability, which I haven't stuck around in any of these worlds long enough to, to show you. But most worlds, when they're randomly created, are unstable, um, meaning that there are unstable blocks generated in those ages that uh, will eventually, over time, disintegrate pretty much the entire age. It'll be le left with nothing but air. Um, which is pretty interesting to see, but obviously not what you want if you want to make uh, anything of substance in these realms, because they'll be disintegrating. That's, that's obviously no good. Um, but ages that you write, actually, and design yourself, as long as you do them correctly with all of the important different features, uh, will be stable. So that's the benefit of using this notebook and learning all these traits, is eventually you can make stable ages. Um, but for the time being, I think I'm just going to uh, stash all of these ages. Maybe I'll make note of this one, because it was kind of weird. We'll call it 61... Mushroom checkerboard. Mushroom check is fine. And save that. There we go. 58, 59. So this one was 60. I'm going to throw 60 in front of this. 
just so I can kind of keep track of what the different ages were. Neat. Um, let's go upstairs and get a chest, and I think I'm going to dump these books into a chest here and just save them for the time being. I don't know what I can do with them long term. I had to uh, put some more chests up here when I was getting rid of stuff, but I had a few from some turtles that I found. Let's just throw this in here somewhere and uh, throw all these descriptive books that I've started creating into there. And uh, I think I'm going to do maybe five or six more. If I find any interesting worlds, I'll show you. Otherwise, I'll just do them off camera <coughs> just to start adding traits to my notebook. I'll be back in a bit. Holy cow, guys. Look at the taint go nuts in this world. Uh, this is, I think, just the second one I traveled to. And uh, obviously, it is quite tainted. Um, I think I'm going to use that opportunity, though, to try to grab some of these tainted materials, see if I can't get anything. There we go, this is something, maybe. Um, nope, it doesn't look like I'm getting anything. I might need shears to pick these up. Oh, here we go, tainted wood. Yeah, there we go, awesome. Ooh, crazy cow. Bad touch. There we go. And the crazy cow dropped something, too. Maybe I'll go looking for a few more of those. Because uh, I'm definitely going to need tainted stuff to do some research. And this appears to be an excellent way to get it. So I'm just going to sit here and grab a few more of these pieces of wood and maybe try to track down some of those cows or whatever animals. And um, then I'll be heading back. Maybe make note of this world for right now because it's a good way to get taint. Sweet. Um, here actually. Let's come on over here. Crazy cows, crazy cows. Wow, they're quick. They got a heart on for me. There we go. Got a couple nice juicy pieces though. Sweet. Any more? Um, nope, these just look like normal monsters. I wonder if skeletons and stuff can get tainted. That'd be interesting to see. I'm not sure though. The only thing I've ever seen tainted are like normal animals. Anyway, I'm gonna head back to the mainland and I will mark this one on my map for sure. Uh, as a good place to get taint. See you in a bit. Alright, on the very next one I tried, it looks like I hit whatever that bug is. Um, during the creation of the world, it broke and uh, gave me saving chunks. And then when I reloaded Minecraft, I was popped out right here. So, yeah, that's no good. Uh, let's see if this works. Ta-da! I got all my stuff back, though. Awesome. So I will make a trek, I guess, because it spawned me back at my original spawn point, which is kind of irritating and weird. But uh, actually, maybe while I'll he I'm here, I'll just pick up some more of this basalt, and then I'll head back to my new house, and we'll continue doing some more Miscraft stuff. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that I actually did hit that bug. Oh, and you may have noticed, I ended up finding a bow with Power 1 on it. Uh, a skeleton jumped me somewhere in one of the realms I went to and dropped it. Pretty awesome. Way to go, skeleton. Anyway, I'll be back in a bit. Alright, I made it back here. Um, the age that gave me trou troubles was obviously 74, because I've got two of those books. One's when it dropped when I started to go to the world, and then one when I uh, reloaded my items. Uh, so let's power that up and see what that world is, and see if we can figure out what caused the problem. Maybe checkerboard, mushroom, jungle... Fog, blue sunset, void? Hmm, I wonder if it was void. That's weird, I don't know what that one is. Everything else, though, looks pretty standard. So I'm not sure what would have caused that. Um, maybe I'll try going back to it again real quick, and uh, we'll see. Um, I don't think I need two of these 74s. Maybe I'll put the other one in there and see if it looks the same. Just out of curiosity. Yep, it looks the same. All right. 
Well, let's delete one of these. Um, save. I did find some slime balls on the way back. I ran into some jellyfish, so I want to save those. Um, and I'll try heading back to 74 and see if it happens again. And if so, I'll just skip that age. And if not, I'll take a look. Uh, I'll be right back. Well, uh, I made it here. Uh, void apparently means that there is absolutely nothing here whatsoever. Either that or it is a side effect of the corruption um, when the world was generated because I am on one block and there is nothing else anywhere around me. Look at the map. Not a thing. There is nothing here. Crazy. So I'll head back and I'll continue hopping to these last couple ages and then see you in a bit to finish up a few other items and then probably wrap up. Alright guys, this is the last world I was going to today and uh, it's a truly bizarre one. Look at this. Uh, it must be a void world because there's no land whatsoever, but we've got these big wooden tendrils and if I go to my map and change it to uh, biomes, it shows that it looks like it's maybe hell and desert. Crazy. Uh, and we've definitely got, you know, pig zombies spawning here. And something down there looks like a mine shaft of some sort, maybe. Uh, I think I'm going to try going, getting over to that mine shaft real quick just to check it out and see if that's really what it is. But that's what it looks like. Anyway, this is just an insane age. So I had to show you guys. Uh, but I'll do a little little bit of exploring real quick, see if I can manage to stay on these tendrils. And uh, be back in a bit. Alright, so I'm back and taking a look at that weird age. And it that is exactly what it was. Checkerboard, hell, desert, void with mine shafts crazy. I wasn't able to get to the mine shafts because none of the uh, tendrils I was on uh, reached all the way over there, but that's that's just an insane age. Anyway, I think that's enough miscraft for right now, and we've got just a few minutes left, so I might try doing something else. Uh, let me get my inventory back together, and we will get started on that. Alright, folks, I'm back. I'm just down here on one of my little uh, terraces just outside of my house. Um, and I think I'm going to try to set up this terrace as a um, industrial craft farm, uh, kind of an experimental farm. And actually, oh no, did I put those in the right places? No, I didn't put those in the right places. So, um, experimental farm. So I'm going to put some water down uh, just to make sure everything's nice and hydrated. And we will go like this. And my layout is probably way less than optimal. I have no idea. I've done this just a little bit uh, in a game before the last Let's Play. So I'm not real sure quite what I'm doing. So it'll be kind of fun. Just an experiment. Um, that's good enough for a start anyway to, to show you what I'm trying to do. And we'll fill these up and get some water here. I ran down and got an... In uh, got a second bucket to get an infinite water supply, but here we go. Alright, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use industrial craft farming, which means I will need some crops, which are made out of sticks, so we'll make up a bunch of sticks here. Um, and I guess I will need a crafting table as well. So what am I doing? Here we go. Come on, good doctor, you can do better than that. Somewhere along the line, my uh, achievements got reset, apparently. Not entirely sure when, but that's not a huge deal, I don't guess. Um, we'll throw that right there. And let's make some crops. And they're just made like this. Ta-da! Crop. And obviously crops doesn't mean uh, things that are growing. It means things that you stick actual crops onto. And then we'll just plant them down in the dirt like this. Um, maybe we have to make a hoe first, actually. I know I'm going to need a hoe, so we'll try that.
like I said, it's been a little while. Uh, I didn't do any of it at all in my last Let's Play because I didn't have Industrial Craft. Let's see. Now can I put those crops down? Yes, there we go. And what I want to do is I want to crossbreed plants in this little experimental garden. So let's give these guys some light. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a plant over here and another plant here, and then the ones in the middle will potentially crossbreed between the two. Um, and you can do it with all kinds of different plants. Uh, here we'll try sugarcane. Ta-da! And then I will get those going and these going. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm putting single crops on the outside one and double crops in the middle one, which will let them crossbreed between the two. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and actually, maybe I don't want those in the middle yet until I've got actually full-grown plants. So let's try taking those out. There we go. And let's grow... Let's grow some pumpkins. And let's grow just some plain old wheat. And maybe I will set up one more here. There and there. And there. And we'll do these melons that I've got too. Why not? Cool. So I've got melons wheat, pumpkin, and uh, sugar cane. Cool, so uh, let me go ahead and dig out this area and kind of make it look nice again. And then I'll be back and hopefully these will start growing a bit. So I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. Looks like several of these are, pros or are have grown all on up. While I was waiting I was also doing some processing up in the uh, industrial craft area. You can hear that macerator going, or the, yeah, macerator going. Um, but anyway, now that these are all grown, let's put those double crops back down and see if we can't get any crossbreeding going on. See how they do. So as soon as I get some growth in these crossbreed areas, I'll be right back. Hey look, I've got some crossbreeding happening here. It looks like it's probably just another reed, but that's alright. We'll let it grow up and we'll see what happens. Um, also some of these have, uh, like these are the watermelons here, and the watermelons are right down at the bottom. They're kind of hard to tell what they are really, but they're there. If you right-click them, they'll harvest them without destroying the plant. So the plant can continue to grow, which is pretty awesome. Pick up a couple pumpkins over here, too. So there we go. Um, I guess I will cut away and see if we can't get any more of these cross crops growing here. So I'll be back when one of them starts sprouting, too. Alright, so we've got something here. Bad. This is a a weed growing right here. So we'll just go ahead and get rid of that and leave the crops there and add our second uh, cross crop to it and let it grow back again. Um, you could tell that weed because it was just a really dark green uh, shape. So we'll keep an eye on these and weeds are something that you do have to keep an eye out for especially when you're crossbreeding. Um, because they'll grow in any of these unoccupied ones, like these cross crops that we've got here. 
and once they start growing they'll also spread to other places choking out other plants that you already had growing so you kind of have to be mindful of your cross crops make sure that you don't get weeds and then they come in and choke out all your other plants so anyway once i get something else growing i'll be back again all right so we've got two things that just popped up here this first one is the weeds and that one's something else it's probably more wheat it's hard to say for sure at this point but see you can see this dark green color that that one is definitely the weed so we'll go ahead and remove that weed and let that other one grow what I might even do is maybe put a hoe down over here and put a crop here and just let a weed grow there. That way I can really quick and easily tell the weed color from other colors. Because sometimes it's, it is really kind of hard to tell. Uh, so maybe I can get some weeds growing here. And since I don't have any plants next to this space, they won't spread. So there's no danger of them killing off my pumpkins and watermelons and stuff. Uh, but then I'll have them available just to keep an eye on so I know for sure what's a weed and what isn't. Anyway, once these last two spots start getting some stuff, I will be right back. Hey, there we go. So it looks like I've probably got more watermelons growing up here in the watermelon area and more pumpkins here in the pumpkin area. Uh, that's cool. Um, at this point, that's just fine. Uh, I'm not actually seriously trying to crossbreed into new types of plants. Uh, I just wanted to show off how the function worked. Um, once these all grow up, we might get rid of these middle ones and start doing crossbreeds of, like, uh, maybe reed and wheat and see if we can't start getting some of the new things. But this is uh, what I wanted to show off for right now, just that I didn't need to plant something in the middle. I could just put two plants on the outside and crops on the middle, and I would get a crossbreed of the two, which is pretty sweet. Um, and as you can see, I've got my weeds growing right here. Evil, evil weeds. Uh, that way I can tell what is a weed and what is not at, just at a glance. Because nothing else looks exactly like weeds. They've got their own unique color and uh, texture. Um, sounds like my engine stopped running, so let's go check on those, see how they're doing. My macerator, that is. Oh, looks like I might be out of energy. Oh, no, I got plenty of energy there. What's going on? Why aren't you getting energy? Hmm. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Let me try just destroying some of these and see if I can't. Figure out what's going on here. Emit if full. Emit if partially full. Empty. Wow, I got lots of different settings. Um, let's go back to just nothing, which I think is normal. I wonder why this generator isn't transmitting energy to my pet box. Well, let me be right back. Um, I'll just play around with these and see if I can't figure out what the heck's going on here. Well, I'm not entirely sure what was going on, but it uh, looks like I've got it figured out for now anyway. Um, I just picked up all of my machines and bumped these down one away so I can keep an eye on this bat box too, which seems to be getting a charge. Um, so, I don't know. We'll just talk it up some weirdness. Anyway, 
Um, I think that's about enough for this episode. We did a bunch of Industrial Craft 2 stuff, both with machines and ores and with uh, farming. And we did quite a bit of Miscraft exploring, uh, checking out all these different uh, ages. And I'll probably continue checking out a few ages off camera for a bit and maybe do some more mining and hopefully get a little lucky. Uh, find another diamond or two so I can start working on some more impressive things. And we'll continue doing some more Industrial Craft uh, farming as well, as well as several other things. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode, and you'll be back next time for episode 5. In the meantime, have fun, and keep mooing.